In this video, we will further expand on some of the key control options provided by Gardonix. The first topic we will talk about is file system mounting. As we mentioned in the previous videos, Windows will automatically do a number of fragmented read and write operations while mounting the drive, which is what we are seeing now. Gardonix can prevent this by disabling file system mounting and making it so that our drive does not get assigned a drive letter. It is almost always preferable to avoid mounting the drive for a few different reasons. First of all, it saves a bit of time because the drive doesn't have to read file system metadata. More importantly, some types of drives can cause windows to crash or freeze during mounting. Of course, file system mounting can also be disabled through the registry or disk part. However, those methods are susceptible to human error, and they affect all storage devices in the system, which can be inconvenient. Furthermore, using these methods will not prevent Windows from reading the master boot record of the drive. The MBR is only one sector, so reading it is usually inconsequential, though if that sector is unreadable, then Windows will fail to identify the drive. Gardonix does not allow Windows to read the MBR, so even if it is a bad sector, the drive will still be identified. Another useful control feature is the ability to report the source drive as read-only. With this setting enabled, Windows and applications are notified that the drive should not be written to, which can substantially affect the behavior of some tools. With this setting enabled, Windows works similarly to what we showed in the previous video with write blocking through the registry, in the sense that it prevents Windows from trying to update file system metadata, and also removes the buttons to delete and create new files. Another control option provided by Gardonix is the ability to respond to write attempts in two different ways. With the fake write setting, Gardonix will reply as if the write command was successfully processed by the drive. In this case, the software application will believe that its writes were successful and some of the newly written content will be stored in cache. The alternative is to respond to write attempts with an error, in which case applications will be aware that their writes have failed and usually the written data will not be stored in cache. The type of response to write attempts can have a major impact as some applications will only work correctly with a particular setting, so it helps to have this choice. Gardonix also allows manually setting the speed of communicating with the source drive to USB 2.0 or 3.0 levels. Some USB 3.0 drives may incorrectly negotiate down to USB 2.0 speeds, which Gardonix can resolve by forcing them to work at USB 3.0. Furthermore, some degraded USB drives will be more stable if they are forced to work at slower USB 2.0 speeds. Another way Gardonix grants more control is by allowing source drive power to be turned on or off from our utility. Connecting the drive to an unpowered USB port is safer because it reduces the chance of an accidental short circuit or electrostatic discharge damaging the drive. The last control feature we will show in this video is the ability to turn off the drive due to inactivity. This is more helpful than it seems, because almost all modern drives will automatically start self-scan procedures after as little as 20 seconds of idling. The drive will start to scan its own surface to find and reallocate weak sectors for maintenance purposes. If a drive is physically degraded, then this process could be quite harmful due to the extra wear and tear. On some drive models, self-scan procedures also cause data loss because the drive may still reallocate sectors even if it fails to first retrieve their contents. With Gardonix, we can set the maximum idle time through the registry, after which source drive power will be turned off to prevent it from doing a self-scan. Thank you for watching. 